Precise, detailed edits are what Photoshop is all about. And yet when it comes to tonal edits, people often think in terms of layer masks. Well, there's actually another way to do it using brush-based tools, but there's a couple of things to know, and I'd like to show you those in Photoshop. So here we have a really high contrast image. And if we double click the zoom tool, which I always want to do so I can see my image at 100%, I can see that there's a lot of really harsh tones in this image. Now, as I mentioned before, we could use layer masks and adjustment layers, but we want to use brush-based tools. But before we do that, let's duplicate our layer so that we have a non-destructive environment. And I'm going to show you a couple of tools that you may have tried a really long time ago that have changed a lot. Uh, they changed a lot in CS4. The first one is the Dodge tool, and we want to use it to open up some of our shadows. Now, the way that it used to work is if I came over here to dodge this, I would just literally paint white on top of the image. And if you tried this, you probably used it once and you thought, that's not how I thought that was going to work at all. I never want to use that again. I'm going to hit Command Z, and I'm going to select Protect Tones. Now, this is on by default. And since CS4, this has just been on by default. So it will just work when you try it. And I can come in here. I can use my Control and Option or Control and Alt keys and click and drag to get the brush size that I want. And even with this turned way up to 100%, you can see that I can open up the shadows without affecting the midtones or the highlights. I can come into any different area and just brighten that up. If I wanted to affect the midtones, then I would just switch that and come in here and brighten those. Now, the correct workflow here is to use a much lower setting and slowly build it up. If you have a pressure sensitive brush, like a Wacom tablet, that would be a really great way to do it. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to do it really, really quickly. The other tool would be the burn tool. And like the dodge tool, if I wanted to burn highlights in the past prior to CS4, it would look something like this. I was essentially painting black. But with protect tones on, I can paint just that tone. I can just darken the highlights. Now again, the way I would use this, I'd turn it way down and I'd really slowly build up areas of your image. And you can really make some nice changes going in, brushing in your shadows and your highlights, dodging and burning. Let's talk really quickly about sharpening. This is something that's often misunderstood. And this is another one where I like to use a non-destructive method of doing this. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll convert this for smart filters. And that's going to essentially turn this into a filter layer. And the first thing I want to talk about is global sharpening. So again, when we're sharpening, we want to be at 100% so we can look at our image. And when it comes to global sharpening, there is not a better way to do that than smart sharpen. A lot of people use unsharp mask. It's got a funny name. It's been in there a long time. It's not the best way to do sharpening here. Smart Sharpen has a bunch of advantages. It's got a really nice preview. It's got some great controls. It's got the ability to not only sharpen, but reduce noise when you're sharpening. You can save and load presets. You can affect the areas in the shadows and the highlights. But what we're really talking about here is precise edits, things that are done to a tiny little part of your image. So I'm going to cancel out of here. I'm going to revert this image, and we're going to use our brush-based technique, which involves duplicating our layer and coming over here to our Sharpen tool. Now, much like Dodge and Burn, for many years, the way the Sharpen tool worked is it created artifacts. And if you tried this, you probably got some artifacts and you never used it again. Like those others, Protect Detail is just on by default, and you can aggressively sharpen in here without creating any artifacts. By using a layer-based workflow, you can turn that off. You can play around with different blend modes. So you see that with selective edits, whether it's tonal edits or sharpening, the brush-based method is a really, really great way to go. It's really easy to use, and it's really powerful. Just be sure to use a low value and build up slowly, and make sure to use a layer-based workflow so you're using a non-destructive way of applying those brush-based edits.